Welcome back, Shaloners. Well, today you guys voted and we're going to do Lana Del Rey. Oh, I know. Y'all been asking for this topic for like 10,000 years. And I, like, I obviously know Lana Del Rey, but I'm not like a super Del Rey darling. I don't know what her fan group is called, but I'm like, I'm going to do a lot of research before we do this video because you guys were like, tell us about like her pathology, her life, also the sugar daddy craze. We're going to get all into it. I have done some research and actually I found out some like wild, wild insider information about her. Okay. But first, just want to remind you, if you have a love question, you want to talk with me one-on-one -on -one about love, about sugar daddies, about regular sugar, about regular daddies, find me on my website, ah, my new website, shallonlester.com. You can submit a question there. Also, find me on Instagram at shallonxo, where I let you vote on topics like this. I let you vote for my next video. And listen to my new podcast, Girl on Top, out every Wednesday, every place podcasts are found. Okay, so Lana. So I did some research. I have found a few things. I mean, look, these are all alleged, alleged things. Allegedly, she has had a lot of filler in her face. I mean, like she has. Her, she's like, oh, I've always been very pouty. Girl, 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 it is 2000 motherfucking 19. You can say I've had filler. I've had filler here, 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 wherever. It doesn't matter. It's like dyeing your hair. Do you know like in the 80s? I mean, you guys might not. You weren't alive. I was like a sperm. Did I say that? I'm sorry. <laughs> it's like a little baby thing, like a little like embryo. But it was like, if you dyed your hair, it was like, oh, this is my hair's natural hue. That was a huge thing. And now it's like, yeah, I dye my hair. Hair. I also like paint my nails. They don't come this color. And I feel like in 20 years, people are going to be like, yeah, I get Botox. I get filler. Also, I'm going to do a whole video on this. Actually, like in a week or two, I'm interviewing a doctor, um, a plastic surgeon who I love. He is just the best. So if you have a question for a plastic surgeon, leave them right here in the comments. That's not what we're talking about. Okay. So that's one of the things I learned about Lana. She lies about her face. And I feel like if people lie about the things they do to their face, that to me tells me they are not comfortable with who they are. I've been very open that I get Botox, I get filler, like whatever. I like experimenting with my face. I like editing and making myself the best person I can be. If you don't like it, you can go ahead and X out of this video. I'm just sorry. Sorry for party rocking. I don't know what to tell you. I have also heard that... Okay, so one of you guys said in a past video in a comment that Lana, like her whole like drugged out sugar daddy obsessed persona is actually like this personality she crafted to harken back to her own like teenage drug days. And I was like, that's really interesting, you know, because I feel like if you listen to like My Chemical Romance, Frank Iaro, the ultimate dad, like their songs were very much like that. You know, it was like they were painting a picture of a character that they were fulfilling, like in Black Parade. And so I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. If that's Lana's thing, that's kind of cool that she's like playing this character that she invented, kind of how Lady Gaga does, you know, some artists like that. <laughs> mm, but then I talked to other sources and other sources said something very different. They said that at multiple... Emmy parties, Grammy parties, Lana showed up allegedly, allegedly so out of it that they thought this is her last night on planet earth. What could she have been on? Could have been, I don't know, sugar. Could it have been too much caffeine? Could it have been opiates. Who is to say? Who is to say? Well, let's break down the psychological profile of Lana Del Rey, right? She is someone who, judging by her face, judging by the fact that she has changed her name, it's like Elizabeth Butterworth or whatever her real last name is, she is trying to leap out of who she is and into a new person with her name and with her face, right? So to me, that is the pathology of a drug user. When we do drugs, 
And drugs can mean a lot of things. Drugs can be heroin. They can be opiates, like oxy. They can be drugs like meth, drugs like weed. They can be drugs like grilled cheese sandwiches. They can be drugs like Sigma Chi Fratties named Liam. They can be drugs like shopping, like gambling, like soul cycle, like whatever, right? A drug has a very different name no matter what our lives are. So if you don't want to be inside your name, inside your face, I think it's pretty plausible to assume you are willing to import a drug to transport you completely out of your life and out of your mind, right? So if we're looking at Lana in that sense, everything she does kind of adds up, right? And therefore, all the things that she sings about, the drugs, the sugar daddies, it perhaps is not a character. It is perhaps more accurate. And you know what? Let's just say that everything is fine with her. Things did not used to be fine. She used to date G-Eazy. Look, I love G-Eazy. I love young Gerald. I mean, oh, I love him. He actually looks just like my ex-husband. Fuck. Oh. Uh, please don't Google. Please don't Google. Well, you don't know what my ex-husband saying. Anyway, but like, they're like tall. They look the same, very polite. And like, so I've just always had like the soft spot for G-Eazy. Also just his raps. <sighs> I just love him. G-Eazy though, I have heard is not doing well on the drug front. And look, maybe that drug is grilled cheese sandwiches. I don't know. Look, I don't know. I've heard, though, that that's why him and Halsey broke up, in addition to the cheating, also the overdosing on his part. And him and Lana, like, he was Lana's muse. And when I heard that, I was like, that's so interesting. Because what do we talk about a lot on this channel? Hurt lockers. And when we talk about hurt lockers, we talk about a guy that we store all of our feelings inside, right? Like our hurts, our hopes, our ideas for ourselves, our ego wounds, the wounds to our self identity, right? And so I feel like G Easy is Lana's hurt locker. Because if, and like my hurt lockers, they were my muse too. Whenever I was at my most creative, when I was writing songs, I used to write songs a lot, when I was like writing books, writing poetry, it was about those hurt lockers. So I think it's really interesting that g Easy of all people could be Lana Del Rey's hurt locker. Crazy because their, their relationship like in the public eye was like not so wild. You know, it wasn't like him and Halsey, they had a song together. Just I like, girl, Halsey, I love you. Ash, I love you. Don't do any more fucking songs with guys you're dating. Oh wait, have you already done it with Youngblood? Okay. Retarded SpongeBob me. Stop doing it. Stop, girl. I love you. It's a bad idea. So Lana has exhibited quite a few markers of poor decision making. But let's talk about this whole sugar daddy thing. And you guys have said, like, look, her like older man, sugar daddy, sort of again, the persona, that's just what that is. That's a persona. Great, whatever. But let's talk about who she's dating now. Oh, it's this old dude. I can't remember his name now. I will look it up by the time I post this video. He is a cop. He's a full-time cop. He's also like a host of a show. He's also like something, something old. I don't know. Don't break a hip falling off a curb, whatever. And they've been seen out and about in Central Park. She looks happy and cute and whatever. He looks, you know, old and handsome and old. And... I've been thinking a lot about her and like if she has a history of like, you know, of, gr of grilled cheese sandwiches, if she has a grilled cheese sandwich history, <sighs> who is it you want to come and save you from your grilled cheese sandwiches? Is it a younger man or is it an older man, an older man who knows how to handle a grilled cheese sandwich, who can Grab that grilled cheese sandwich by the throat and say, you're not going to eat these anymore. Oh, take me away, daddy. And I think, like, I talk a lot about dating younger guys. I get it. But I talk a lot about the pitfalls of dating an older guy, right? Because if we date someone older, a lot of times we are bamboozled by their ability to come in and take that control over our life. And look, they know, like, they know when we need them. 
like the devil always does. You know, they see a weak spot, like a stalker, like a virus, like the flu virus itself. When we're weak, when we're tired, when we're vulnerable, we have cracks and we let in something bad, whether that's the flu, whether that's the devil, whether that's the daddy. And yes, the daddy at first feels commanding. The older guy, he's going to take control. He's going to tell you what to do. But that's a slippery slope. When a, when a person, any person, a guy or a girl comes into your life with the promise of controlling it and fixing it from that point of control, that's a bad thing. So what can we learn from Lana Del Rey, right? Well, I think you guys have asked a lot about sugar daddies and I might've had one or two, um, mezcal mules tonight. And so I'm going to tell you my own sugar daddy experience. A few years ago, I was in not a great place. I was in the place where I was a little cracked and viruses can get in. And I was like, you know what seems like an incredible, like, you know what seems like an idea that is so easy and that I've never thought of before. And yet it's a no brainer, a sugar daddy. And I got on, what's it called? Sugar, it's called sugar meat, sugar. Why am I blanking on this? Well, I'm blanking on this because I'm so far out of it. Anyway. I made a profile on like a sugar daddy site. And I think like I had a sugar baby that I know. And she's like, okay, you have to pick like a persona. You know, you have to pick like, are you like the hippie dippy girl? Are you like, like the slutty Russian stripper who's going to like do whatever and she can get her legs behind her head? Are you going to be like the ingenue? Like, no, I'm a thousand years old. So I was like, okay, I'm going to be the sophisticated cosmopolitan, like, woman about town. You know, you can take me out with your friends. You can take me to a board meeting. You can take me to a United Nations meeting, like on your arm. Like I am sophisticated. I can talk about anything. I am, I go with everything. I'm like a Chanel suit. That's my vibe. And so I tried to set myself apart. Cause like, look, I'm not going to fulfill this. Like I'm a young, like hot, slutty, like 20 year old chick. Just that's not my thing. And so I was talking to a few boys on there. <laughs> so sorry. Did I say boy? Did I say boys? I mean, horrible old, old men. If we think that we're going to be sugar babies for young, hot dudes. And I should have known that I was doomed from the start because I have never in my entire life wanted to date older guys, you know, like that's never been my vibe. So I was already working on an uphill battle. If you do like older guys, lean closer. But here's the thing. They own you. Make no mistake about this relationship. It is not reciprocal. It's not a boyfriend girlfriend thing where you can like have your bad day. You can be like, I am a period. I'm fat. You rub my feet. No, <laughs> no girl. No. The reason you don't want to be a trophy wife or a trophy girlfriend is because then your boyfriend is your boss. He's your boss. And that means you work 24 hours a day. There's no bad days. There's no off days. There's no calling in sick. There's no you going over to his house and pouring your guts out about your bad day and crying because your friend's mad at you. That's not what that is. No. His terms, his rule, his land all the time. That's the price of admission. And I think the whole sugar baby thing, it makes it seem very like, oh my God, this is money for nothing. Girl. Ain't no such thing as a free lunch, especially when it comes to pussy. Oh, <gasps> does that sound gross? It is gross. It is gross, but you need to understand that's the way they're viewing you. And look, I never went so far as to like hook up with anybody on that site, but I had like quite a few dates with this one guy, Chris, and he is, I was like, why, why, why this whole sugar thing? Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm going to ask the hard questions. I don't care if you don't like me, that's fine. And he's like, and he had a really interesting answer that made me understand this dynamic so much better. He's like, I want everyone to be on the same page. I want a girl to know I'm not going to marry him. I'm not going to have kids with them. I'm not going to come meet their family for Christmas. Ooh, if they have a bad day, I'm not going to be there for them. I want happy, fun, great interactions or none. That's it. And I feel like I, before I was rich, I wasn't able to have that dynamic. I was like, 
oh, like ghosting girls. I was lying to them. Like I wasn't able to tell them the, the real deal of what I wanted because I didn't have the money to give them something on the other end. And I'm, I told them like, you actually never had to pay a girl for that kind of allowance. You really just had to be honest. Be like, hey, this is what I'm capable of giving. I'm not going to be this person. I'm not going to be that person. This is all I want. And you, whatever it is you're into, you can find someone who's gang for that. You can. But you can't if you're not honest about it. You can't find your tribe if you don't claim the tribe that you're in. You know what I mean? And if you don't be honest with girls, you're going to get a lot of crazy Great. They're going to be so crazy. They're not crazy. It's just that they don't understand what page you're on because they're on a different one, the page you led them to. So I understood where he was coming from. He's like, I want a very transactional relationship. I want everybody. I want the writing on the wall. I want all the parameters to be decided on up front. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And so I was like, okay, I'm, I'm in for this. No, no, I wasn't. When I tried to talk about anything, when I tried to say, hey, let's meet here instead of there, mm -mm. he's going to send an Uber for me, but we're going to go to a place by his apartment. And I was like, I don't want to hook up with you. And he's like, that's not the deal. And I was like, well, well, the deal was you buy me a Chanel bag. So where's the bag? It's like, well, you come up to my apartment first. No, no. And if I was 18 years old, 19, 20, 25, I might be like, okay, yeah, like you have to give to get. No, <laughs> no. I make my own money. I always have. And so like I have the luxury of deciding. But if you're young, if you're not a citizen, if you don't have an education, if you don't have a family, you don't have the same kind of decision making capabilities. You don't have that same kind of elasticity. And it's a very scary position to trade your free will for money. It's very frightening. So I ask you guys to think long and hard about the sugar baby construct. And I've said before, I want to interview a sugar baby. I want to interview a sex worker. I want to interview a stripper. When you guys DM me, I want you to come and visit so that we can talk. So if you guys are in the industry, please comment below so that we can connect because like, this is just like level one of this whole thing. But look, the overall thing of a sugar baby, I think is the idea that we can just be rescued from our circumstances, you know? And we see this so many times in other aspects of our life. Crushes on celebrities, crushes on a fuck boy. Like we have an emotional getaway car that takes many forms. It doesn't always look like a sugar daddy. It doesn't always look like Shawn Mendes. It looks like a lot of other things. So we need to ask ourselves, sit with yourself, sit with yourself for literally five minutes. If we are allowed to be alone with our psyche and just let her speak to us for five minutes, our whole life can change. She, the psyche must be heard. She'll do it the easy way in five minutes. She'll do it the hard way for 50 years. And she'll keep tapping, tapping, tapping on your door until you hear her or she'll destroy the fuck out of your life. So sit and say, what is my emotional getaway car right now? What is it? Is it going to soul cycle four times a week? Is it making a certain amount of money that I think is going to like deliver me from all of my problems? Is it dating this fuck boy? Is it like getting this guy? Is it having a baby? What is it? Get to the root of that and then dismantle what you think that thing means to you. You know, because that's what it is. The getaway car is speeding you away from what? Look at the what, and then you've got your answer. Then you've got your answer. And hey, the sugar baby thing, I know. Sometimes it is simply a logistical issue. You want to make money. You came from Belarus. You don't have an education. You got a set of tits and an ass, girl. Weaponize that. Weaponize it. But have goals beyond this. Keep this compartmentalized. Don't tell yourself that this is the getaway car away from everything. There is more to you than this. There's more to your goals and there's more to your life. It's up to you to figure out what that is and where that goes. And then charge 25% extra. I want to know what you guys think about Lana Del Rey. Do you think she's addicted to opiate? 
<laughs> to grilled cheese sandwiches? Would you fuck Jeezy? Even if he was addicted to grilled cheese sandwiches too? All you want now is a grilled cheese sandwich. And tell me if you would ever be a sugar baby. And if you considered it and like what happened with your experience and if you were like into it and you had like an amazing experience actually, like literally like tell us how. If you want to make like some sort of like PowerPoint presentation and link us in the bio, that would be like kind of amazing. Okay, Shaloners, I'll see you later. Like I said, go to my website, shalonlester.com if you want to ask me a question or find me on Instagram at shalonxo to weigh in on the next video topic and listen to my podcast, Girl on Top, out every Wednesday. <laughs>